I have heard the phrase, uh, the bay starts here, and, and, and I would have to agree. Uh, never really put it into perspective uh, quite like going, going down to Tangier Island. Uh, it, it's one of those things you always hear as a, as a slogan or a slogan or, or an advertising. Um, but until you get down there and meet the folks, um, they're dealing with the exact same issues um, that we deal with. Uh, labor, regulations, permits, the economy. I started back in school with a handful of cows and um, had, had a ball with them. Um, a lot of times when folks might be, you know, classmates may have been at a party on a weekend, I was just happy to be knee high in cow when you're shoveling out the barn. It's just something you you really got to enjoy, and, and, I, and I still do. It's it, it's peaceful uh, to hop on a tractor and go mow 20, 30 acres of, of hay. Uh, I don't know, that's, just be, that's the best thinking time man could ever get in. There's, there's good days, there's bad days. Uh, when you enjoy what you're doing, the good definitely always outweighs the bad. My family came over here uh, during the Civil War time in Fredericksburg. And uh, it was my great grandfather. My grandfather, he was a waterman. I knew from an early age that it's, it's what I wanted to do. Loved being on the water. They say if you love what you're doing, you never work a day in your life. Of course, then you have your days when it's it's very windy, rough, rough weather. And especially in the wintertime, you not only deal with the rough weather, but you're dealing with freezing temperatures, ice, ice on the boat, ice on the waterman. If the health of the bay is not good and the watermen aren't doing good, and uh, charter fishermen, it, it affects a lot, of, a lot of people and it affects the economy. I have kids in college and uh, to put food on the table and keep everybody fed and put my kids through college, I need to catch quite a few crabs and oysters. And so far, it, it's, it's working out. I've learned that Tangier Island is really very much like the hometown I grew up with, small town. Everybody knows your business. Everybody knows when things are going well, when they're not going so well, when you need some help. And when somebody needs help, everybody pitches in. So I've personally enjoyed it, you know, getting to know these families more over the last nine years. The Chesapeake Bay is really an ecosystem out of balance. The major pollutant to the bay is excess nutrients, and they come from agriculture and urban and suburban runoff and a lot of other sources. The excess nutrients fuel the growth of algae blooms that then block the sunlight that's needed for the underwater grasses to grow. And when the algae dies, the natural process of decomposition sucks up all the oxygen that the critters need to live. We can only save the bay if we help control the runoff in the rivers and streams that feed it. Farmers are often disconnected from the bay because they live hundreds of miles away. So our real challenge was, how do we get farmers in the upper watershed to care more about the bay and possibly change their practices on their own farms? The whole purpose of the trip really is to give them an opportunity to enjoy the bay as much as we do, um, to experience it in their own way, in many different ways, and to have the opportunity to have conversation with people that live on Tangier Island. The way it works, uh, it has a bay pocket or a bay wheel in the bottom of it here, uh, where, the, where you put your bait has this lead with this strap. You put we do run them through a day's worth of activities that we do with school kids and teachers out on our island centers. So you'll have to kiss and rip three fish. Kiss, kiss first, first, then rip. rip. Second. <laughs> Back in just being a female. <laughs> so you take your, your fish. You don't have to rip it totally in half. Just get it opened up. You I did the first one. <laughs> and they may only set one or two pots where the watermen here might be setting four and five hundred pots every day. And they make connections with things they do on their farm, you know, milking a hundred cows every day, twice a day kind of thing. I was expecting we were going to go down and be told everything that we were doing wrong that was polluting the bay as farmers back here in the valley, but uh, 
once you got there and met the folks, they're real world people. It becomes very, very clear very quickly on the trip that the watermen are very much like the farmers. They're very independent. They like to be business for themselves. They have families they're raising. It was a, it was a very good trip. Uh, regardless of how much I had to do back home, I wouldn't trade them three or four days for anything. It was, it was good to get to know everybody. Hopefully they come back through the channel back here on our way home with a different feeling than they came on Friday. And so we hope that they'll make some changes or at least talk to their neighbors about making changes if they've already done a lot of work. Thanks for everything, Captain. Oh, you're yeah. certainly welcome. Yeah. The bank says, yeah, you take care. Yeah. Have a safe trip out. Any environmental practice that you may do to clean the water up, I think has to make you feel good. Uh, you know you're doing it, you know you're doing the right thing for yourself, but it makes a, it makes a big difference when you get down to the bay and get to see those watermen and know that you're making a difference in their life as well. Initially in 96, we did fence all the cattle back uh, away from Smith Creek. Um, since then, uh, we've cut down on heavy traffic areas, uh, mainly by putting water centrally located in the fields and in fields where cattle didn't have to track. Uh, that, that has helped greatly. Through NRCS programs, I reckon we've installed a couple automatic waters. We've installed some cross fencing uh, pipeline, which which was which was a great help. Some of those things would have not not been possible without uh, without the help of Chesapeake Bay and NRCS. By doing these best management practices, uh, my cattle are drinking cleaner water. Uh, I, the health is definitely better on them. At the same time, I think we're, we're keeping more nutrients here on the farm and getting the benefit of them. And in, in turn, we're still keeping those nutrients from getting into the water as well. Some of the watermen, they, they've started practices that improved the bay. And they, they weren't forced to do it. They, they did it on their own. And uh, if we were doing something that was detrimental to the farmers, uh, they wouldn't have to force me to change what I was doing to, to help them out. I'd be, I'd be happy to do it. I want the farmers doing well because I appreciate uh, what they produce and it's uh, very important. We've made a lot of progress cleaning up our streams and rivers in the bay over the years and we're actually about halfway there. The Chesapeake Bay Clean Water Blueprint is a plan that's going to help restore the bay. If we can follow that plan, we can save the bay and have clean water not only for the farms but our watermen, our children and our grandchildren. If we can work together, each of us can make a difference. Thank you.